Hello, I'm John Graydon. Welcome to USA Karate. Martial arts in the media is the theme of today's show. Later on, we'll bring out Hollywood stuntman Arthur Edwards to share with you some of the secrets of the silver screen. But right now, let's jump right into it and cut to the king of the martial arts movie, Bruce Lee and Enter the Dragon. I'm here with John Corcoran. Mr. Corcoran is the premier journalist in the martial arts industry. He's written three of the best overview general information books in the martial arts on the market, including Martial Arts, Traditions, Histories, and People, and the Martial Arts Catalog. He's also been editor for all of the major martial arts magazines, including martial arts movies. So Mr. Corcoran is uniquely qualified to discuss with us martial arts and movies. John, welcome to USA Karate. Thank you, John. What kind of impact have these films had on the martial arts? We see ninja movies all the time on cable. We see kung fu theater every Saturday. Has it had an impact on what we're doing? Uh, in fact, it's had a tremendous impact, John. Basically, as a historian, I can put it this way. Mm -hmm. uh, the martial arts films and entertainment have had more of a profound impact on the growth and proliferation of martial arts than any other aspect of the business. Now that's a, a high-minded statement. It certainly is. Let me qualify it for you. First of all, we experienced our first big business boom in martial arts in 1966, if you remember when Bruce Lee co-starred in the Green Hornet TV series. Sure. It ignited all kinds of interest that was in martial arts. one of my arts. early sparks. That's Memphis. right, and mm -hmm. one of my own too. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time we got to see somebody who could really do the martial arts mm. on a weekly series. Right. And what happened was we experienced a tremendous boom in enrollments in schools around the mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, of course, as Bruce Lee grew into a movie star after he right. went to Hong Kong, in about 1971 a movie came out called Billy Jack. Oh yeah. Which they called a sleeper, which means mm -hmm. it was a, a low budget picture which mm -hmm. became a big budget smash oh, hit. Oh sure. And what that did was usher in a new era for martial arts because right on the heels of that, mm -hmm. ABC TV picked up the uh, Kung Fu TV Kung Fu, series. Right. right, which ultimately, I think within a year and a half of when it first came out, it became the number one rated show in the country and won two Emmy Awards. Okay. for two separate episodes. So now we're up into the 70s. All right, uh, but let me add also, honest. on the heels of that, we had a one, two, three punch, which was Bruce Lee came in and created the so-called Bruce Lee era on top sure. of the Billy Jack mm -hmm. success and, of course, the success of the uh, Kung Fu television series. Now, I began my training in 1974 after seeing we had the influx of what they refer to as chop sake westerns, okay, the low-budget Kung Fu Hate killers. that name. Hate that name. Action. <laughs> Action from beginning to end. Plot right. had nothing to do with it and so forth. And um, though, of course, Bruce Lee's films were above that, he kind of led the uh, invasion itself. Now we have the Karate Kid. John Carpenter is uh, releasing a $25 million martial arts extravaganza of Big Trouble in Little China. We'll look for that later this summer. Um, compare the movies of today, the martial arts movies we're seeing, to the Chinese invasion we had in the early 70s. Okay. Actually, there's less similarity than there are distinctions. Oh, there's more contrast. That's right. Mm -hmm. let, let me just point out a little perspective on that, which will help everyone, including our viewers, when they're looking all, at all of this influx of different types of films. Mm -hmm. uh, what I actually call the revenge motive right. was the original premise for most martial arts films. And, of, of course, those coming from Hong Kong are mostly all built upon that storyline. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that is a great gimmick because it's a device which allows them to have constant action through the sure. film. In other words, it, it engineers a process by which the martial arts can be used beginning to end. Mm -hmm. And, of course, once that genre hit our shores here during the 70s with the Bruce Lee boom and all mm -hmm, of that, right. they used it even more then. You saw that then even in American-made martial arts films, the early Chuck Norris films, for example. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, the only distinction there was that they they broke the action a little bit more, so you had some acting. An in attempted a, plot, occasionally. That's right, <laughs> an attempted plot. And I now, see. now, secondly, John, mm -hmm. that was the revenge motive. Now, secondly, it moved into just roughly a comedy genre, a subgenre, we could say, like the Jackie Chan mm -hmm. films. Right. We see him as the king of kung sure. fu comedy. We'll talk about him more later. That's right, and mm -hmm. I'm going to bring up an important point later because I think that's the wave of the future. And then thirdly, in the 80s, 
thank God we had the Karate Kid. Oh boy. Which once and for all brought us into a, the human level, mm -hmm. the heartwarming type of story right. with it, good interaction of characters mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. we see the real martial arts values being applied to everyday living. I see. And that's my favorite. Okay. Well, we talked about a little Jackie Chan. We're up to the Karate Kid. Let's go back to the king. Let's go back to the guy that kicked it all in there. Bruce Absolutely. Lee, 1973's Into the Dragon. USA Karate, Tampa Bay's leading family karate center. As winners of the United Fighting Arts Award for Best School, USA Karate's staff of champion black belts are dedicated to providing you with the latest in contemporary self-defense training. For self-defense, fitness, or just peace of mind, stop by our main school in the Tyrone Garden Shopping Plaza, 9th Avenue North and 58th Street in St. Petersburg, or call 323-0830 for the location nearest you. USA Karate, a tradition of excellence. Safety Tips with John Graydon, sponsored by Dr. Richard Ferry. Hi, Danny. Hi, Mr. Graydon. What are you doing here? Your mom had to work late. She sent me to pick you up. What's the code word? Your mom said the code word was Relayer. All right. Thanks, Mr. Graydon. The use of a code word, known only by the child's immediate family, can be an effective screen in case of emergencies. I'm John Graydon. I hope this safety tip helps you learn to keep your guard up. Welcome back to USA Karate. Martial arts in the media is the theme today, and we've looked at some Bruce Lee action. Uh, after his untimely death, 1973, uh, John, there was, there was a slew of imitators. Bruce okay. Lai and Bruce Lee, variations of the spelling, people trying to imitate him. And then a gentleman, Jackie Chan, came along That's right. with very much an opposite type of style of Bruce Lee. Very Tell us so. about Jackie Chan. Okay, first of all, Jackie is considered in the Orient the king of kung fu comedy. And what is unique about him, John, that he has only done one American film that's actually been filmed by right. an American film The Big film Brawl. The right. Big Brawl, back mm -hmm. in about 1979, mm -hmm. I believe it mm -hmm. was, 1980. But his Chinese films, uh, which he is real comfortable making, right. are unique in that even though they're in the Chinese language, the comedy elements that he inserts in them mm -hmm are international in scope. In other words, you can watch his movie without even hearing the dialogue mm -hmm. and laugh whether you're in Germany right. or you're European or you're an American well, or Latin. We saw a clip of Bruce Lee earlier and I think later on we'll take a look at some Jackie Chan. Right. There are some major contrasts in just yeah. the non-stop action. The whole approach to the thing is That's real right. different. And one other thing which is unique about him and no one thought it would ever happen. Bruce Lee had broken every existing box office record in Hong Kong mm -hmm. during his career. Right, sure. Uh, I mean, it skyrocketed mm -hmm. way beyond anything that was ever done, including American films that had been released in Hong Kong. Mm. Well, Jackie came along, and within two years of Bruce Lee's death, 